2016 Honda Civic. So I released a video I think when I did the recovery on this and this is one of the Hondas that have the leaking condensers and when this Honda did come in for some collision repair, no damage to the air conditioning system, uh, it was low on refrigerant, it was really low. I think I only got like some 200 grams out of here and it's like a 500 gram system. But that's not what we're talking about. Um, you may have seen videos and I've had people ask me, why do you use two vacuum pumps? And sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It just depends on how clean and dry the system is and how fast I want to get in and out of there and get the system down. So everybody knows that the field piece um, 8 CFM vacuum pump is an excellent vacuum pump. It does a really good job. So it is working its way magic right now. Let's see, oh, yeah, I got it on. There it goes. So it's working its magic right now, and it's going down. I just had to open it up because I was just checking the rate of decay and how much moisture was in the system, and it went up, what was that, 900 microns or so. Um, that's all great. Now I've had people say, oh, more vacuum pumps make no difference because it necks down all the way down to the restriction of depending what your valves is. Yes, that is true up to a certain point. You have your regular flow, your transition flow, your molecular flow. And I'm actually gonna post, I think maybe my next video when I get home tonight, there's an excellent video that was released by Jim Bergman and he actually put this with a flow meter so you can actually see it. This is something that my dad taught me. I wasn't even in high school yet. So this is old news. There's nothing technical about this and it's nothing uh, new and mystical. It's been around from the dawn of time of science and physics when stuttering fluid flows for fluid dynamics. So here we go. We're sticking about, we're just under 600 microns and that is where it's sticking right now. It's not pulling no more. It just won't go down because there's so much moisture in the system. Unfortunately, it was left open to the atmosphere for the past several days and the PAG oil that's in here absorbed a lot of moisture so I'm having a tough time getting it down. So I did break out the bad boy on this one because I knew there would probably be a problem. So let's let's open up that one. Right now it's closed up. Let's watch the micron gauge. Now, there's less, when you get past the valves, if you put a micron gauge right here, after your valves, it will be a higher reading than the sensor in here because that's what it's pulling in the hoses to up to the restriction. And then on the other side of the restriction, it's actually a higher vacuum or lower, depending on how you want to word it. Um, how about we say, less vacuum no that might confuse people too but let's say it reads 500 here it might read 900 here so that will give you a ratio now let's open up this other vacuum pump right here and let's watch the micron gauge boom and that's what happens when you open up and you have more ability more horsepower think of it like a drag race if you have a 1973 ford pinto on a drag race and then you have a thousand horsepower dragster right next down it to a quarter mile the dragster gets to the other end in six seconds the pinto takes 39 seconds okay so we're all going about time here it's all about time here in the big cities, like in San Francisco, I guess New York and other big cities, when your hourly rate is approaching $200 an hour, it's all about time. So it more than pays off to have a system that can reduce the times. So most guys don't even care. They get it to 29, they stop right there and they just blast in a can of refrigerant. Those aren't repair shops, those are hack shops. So we're not talking about those. We're talking about the guys who actually want to do a good job and make sure the system lasts a long time because it doesn't have moisture in the system or reduce to a point where it won't freeze up just after it gets to the expansion valve on long run times on warmer days and then they have that intermittent customer complains the ac on a hot day sometimes works and it starts working then maybe after 20 minutes it stops working and then it'll start working again later on then it stops working 
and uh, or it worked for 20 minutes I turn it off dry five ten minutes turn it back on and it works again there's an indication we're not talking about over pressurization we're talking about excessive moisture restricting the expansion valve just after expansion valve it does happen when you have excessive moisture and by using a micron gauge you can confirm you don't have excessive moisture in the system and again you always want to make sure your problem is not in your hoses in your gauges so let's disconnect our gauges we're not disconnected we're just going to unscrew the unit and we're going to confirm what our hoses and gauges are can do so what we're watching right now is that we know all the way up to my fittings this system could go down to as it is and if i leave it on here it'll go below 30 microns especially if i leave it overnight but we could see how fast and how deep it could go so let's now open it back up and there There's that one so now we're back up to the system so you can actually see the capability knowing you have at any of your crimps where all these crimps are there's no leaks there where your o-rings and they're not o-rings they're gaskets at your hoses and your seals here your your gaskets that are at your seals here to make sure they're all in good working order that you're capable of going down under 100 microns so now you could walk away go work on something else do your work order go on lunch or as i do a lot of times if i have a bad one i just leave my system set up here because i have several setups that are exactly identical i have many vacuum pumps i have many gauges and i just go do the next car or i go down the street to the next shop and come back an hour or two later and then charge it back up the idea is though is you want to make sure this gets deep usually if i go right now when i come back from another shop this turns off to save your batteries after 15 minutes of running and I come back here with this setup I'll be under oh 200 microns or 100 microns depending on how much moisture was originally inside the system and don't worry if your hose collapses look at this hose you'll see this hose is flat it flattened out because these were these newer hoses on some of them absolutely actually collapse and that's normal um that's it just another little tidbit about her on some videos that were posted on youtube two vacuum pumps don't make a system they shouldn't talk unless they have the equipment that can actually measure and they have experience not one or two systems not a system on a bench with a little can and a coil of hose or anything like that out there in the real world on a system that had refrigerant in it that's been open to the atmosphere for a week can totally saturated oil with moisture and then again if you had say a system would had two evaporators one here one in the back if it was a suv and you take off one of the sensors somewhere and then screw in your micron gauge in the system and then you can take your difference of vacuum of what your microns are in your hoses then as you get to the Schrader valve, you have your vacuum, your micron gauge hooked up to where one of the sensors are. You take it off, you put your adapter there, and you get to see the difference that I may be reading 300 microns here, but my micron gauge, if it was attached right here and we were reading it, it might read 700 or 900 microns right there. So this does not indicate what is really happening inside the system past the valve on the other side of the valve that's it but oh one other thing if you do go and you just walk away and go work the rest of the day and you get this down below 100 microns or around 100 microns i can confirm and absolutely tell you if you had a micron gauge set up right here after the valve and you had 100 or below microns at this point reading by this sensor you definitely have below probably 300 microns at this point on this side that's something you just learn over time and it has to do with time too 
it's not as soon as you hit that this will go down because if you turned it off there'd be a rapid rise because there's still a lot of moisture in the system it's how much time and i think there's one other piece of information that doesn't really get out there too much there's this magic number they like to throw around like 500 microns 500 microns is pretty sloppy actually somewhere around 240 or so like in the old refrigeration days we used analog uh, needles with a micron gauge uh, somewhere around 200 microns is actually where you really would like to go but because times are about cutting corners and being faster they kind of rose the standard up to 500 microns but it's not once you get there once you get there really not much has been going on when you lower the vacuum and the vacuum re goes down to a level of 500 microns you hear these guys say oh that's good enough you stop and you fill it up no no work was really done getting to 500 microns it's how long you stay at 500 microns and below because as you're getting below there that's when all the work really starts happening with the moisture that is inside trapped on the surface of the refrigerant oil in deep refrigerant oil like in the bottom of your compressor bottom of your accumulator maybe the bottom of your receiver in that deep oil there there will be water way down low in the bottom of the oil by drawing a vacuum you're not going to be getting that out in no humanly reasonable amount of time or anything like that under ambient temperatures that moisture is going to stay buried deep there's a surface tension on the oil that doesn't like to let stuff travel through it and come out and pop out just like when you pour a glass of water and you get that surface tension you can actually see that you can pour water into a glass and it goes up higher than the rim of the glass that's a surface tension and you ever notice have you ever seen something heavy like a piece of sand really small or a little tiny sliver of metal land on water and not sink and it stayed on the surface of the water it's metal but it's floating on the surface of the water that is surface tension and even though you have a deep vacuum water and moisture will be trapped inside the oil and refrigerant could be too because of the surface tension and the lack of you can't break that molecular bond that'll want to let the gas transfer through into the atmosphere and be sucked out and once you do get down to that low level there is no more substance to actually draw it through many feet of line and out the vacuum pump this is where nitrogen comes in and you can flush the system because once the moisture molecules can't flow anymore because there's no substance in there that can actually draw it out the molecules stay to the surface and they just stay there they're just hovering around bouncing they're not they're not flowing from the evaporator coming out here and slowly coming out in you went past the transition period now you're into molecular flow and they just stay there so now they're on the surface but they can't go anywhere you have a deep vacuum and I made videos on using nitrogen and how to shut off and open up the valves like say close off the low side purge a little bit of nitrogen through the high side to get up to about zero psi one psi close off the high side so now you have the nitrogen that pushed forward to the low side now open up the low side so you could suck from the low side you know you have basically pure nitrogen pushed in at the high side and it'll like in a sweeping motion go through and scavenge and sweeping off the moisture that came to the surface and you'll draw it under a deep vacuum again pulling out that moisture that couldn't come out because you were all the way down to the molecular level where you couldn't get it out anymore this is where that term triple vac and evacuate comes in uh, i covered that more on other videos go see it and i'll give you links to somebody who who makes videos about that much better than i do uh, because i don't go into the depth of there that's their education or um they that all they do is tools and educate that's their possession uh position so jim bergman i'll give you a link in a, another video i've released a video about seeing jim bergman's videos before and i'll make another video on a recent video he just put out to let you know about this so you can go watch it to learn some more uh that's it for now 
And yes, I'm in a noisy, active shop right now. And uh, so there ain't no editing going on here. I actually work for a living. All right, see you guys.